and welcome back to my channel. My name is Misha Jordan. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Today, I am going to show you all of the different Google Meet features that Google has added. Um, this is going to be a tutorial of the different features that I happen to use. The first one that I'm going to show is how to blur your background or have different backgrounds, um, how you can have the students have different backgrounds. Then I'm also going to show you the raise hand feature, breakout rooms, Q&A, as well as polls. So if you want to see a tutorial on all those different ones, please make sure to stay tuned. All right, so the very first thing that I'm going to show you is the different backgrounds that you can have. So currently we are getting ready to log into our Google Meet, but if you notice at the bottom right hand corner, there's a button that says change background. So let's go ahead and click that and see what happens. So when I click change background, there are a variety of different backgrounds that I can choose from. So we can have a room with books and shelves behind us if we would like. We could also be in a modern living room. We could even be a, have a blurry beach behind us. The great thing about uh, the backgrounds as well is that you can also blur your background. So if you notice, I have a plant to the side of me. And if I hit slightly blur your background, you will see that I'm the focal point and then the plant is slightly blurred. We could also have to where it blurs out the background completely and I am the true focus. So I do feel like these different backgrounds are something that are very um, interesting and very fun for the kids to use. Even you as the teacher, you can have different backgrounds behind you. Sometimes depending on the day, I like to add one just to have some fun. So please make sure to check that out. The next feature that I am going to show is the raised hand feature. This feature is good for when students have questions or if they want to answer your questions that you may have asked, or maybe they want to unmute their mic and say something. So if you happen to notice at the right hand corner at the bottom, there is a button that says raise hand. When you click raise hand, the teacher will be notified that the hand is raised. Let's go ahead and take a look at the teacher view to see what it looks like on the teacher's end. Now we are taking a look at the teacher view. If you happen to notice on the teacher view, student four has a image right next to its mute button, which basically says that they are trying to raise their hand. So that's one way for you as the teacher to know that the student has a question or their hand is raised for a specific reason. Also too, if you take a look and click show everyone, you will also see something that says raised hands. Then if you notice, it says student three has their hand raised. So that is another way to identify which students have their hands raised or are using that feature. Once you have acknowledged that student, you may lower their hand and then it will lower it on their end as well. And then you can continue with class as normal. Google Meet now has the feature in which you can have different activities while your students are in the Google Meet. So let's go ahead and take a look at those now. At the right hand corner, you'll see a button that has a triangle, square, and circle. That is where you will be able to find the different activities that you can have for your students. The first one is breakout rooms, then we have polls, and then we have Q and A. Let's go ahead and take a look at breakout rooms first. So when you click breakout rooms, you will see where you have all of your students who are logged into the Google Meet as a part of the main call. You can also see something where it says set up breakout rooms. If you click set up breakout rooms, there are some different features that you can use for your different breakout rooms. So first you can set how many different rooms you would like. You could set a timer. You can shuffle to where it will randomly place the students in a breakout room, or you can clear. So let's go ahead and test this out. Because there are only four students, I am going to have two breakout rooms. So as you can see, they randomly already shuffled these students in there for me, but if I click shuffle again, it will place different students in different rooms. I can also set a timer, and so if I set a timer, it will allow me to end breakout room after a set amount of time. 
So let's go ahead and see how this works. If I put the check, I can put a certain number. So let's go ahead and say that we want our breakout room to be three minutes. Then I could click OK. And when I open the rooms, it will allow the different students to go to different rooms. You can also select specific students for the breakout rooms. So for example, if I click clear, it cleared the breakout rooms and I can type a name or drag different names to the different breakout rooms. So let's see how this works. So I'm dragging student two and student one into breakout room one. Or if I would like, I can type in the name student four and student three. So now that is also a way in which you can have breakout rooms created. Now let's take a look and see what happens when we open the rooms. So it says breakout rooms are in session, ending in four minutes at the top, now let's take a look at the student view. On the student's computer, they will see something that says join a breakout room. You've been invited to join breakout room one. You can return to the main call at any time. When they click join, they are then taken to that new breakout room. So in the breakout room, the students are now able to talk with one another and it shows who all is in the call. They can chat with one another they can basically do everything that you can do normally in a regular meet. If they want to ask questions to their teacher, they can ask for help or they can return to main call. If they ask for help, it will then notify the teacher that student one needs help. You can also see it on the right hand side right here to where the teacher can then join into the room. So when the teacher joins into the room, they are then able to talk with those students that happen to be in the room. And it will just be those two students. Currently at this time, Google Meet does not have to where you can record the different uh, breakout rooms, but hopefully that is something that they uh, bring in the future as it will be very beneficial. When the teacher wants to leave the breakout rooms, if they click activities and then click breakout room again, they can then leave or if they would like, they can join another room. So let's go ahead and leave and go back to the main room. So I'm currently in the main room and it shows that student four and student three did not go to their breakout room. So if you notice on the right hand side, it says main call. And this shows the two students or the number of students that did not go to their breakout room. And then if we notice right here, breakout one, student one and student two are currently there. And then that's kind of also why there's that green dot next to their name. As you can see, the breakout room is ending in 12 seconds. And then all of the students will be able to go back to their specific room. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how that works. On the student's view, it shows that breakout room has ended and that they can return to the main call. If their mic happens to be on or their camera happens to be on, they are able to make those adjustments and turn off their camera or mute their mic before returning to the main call. So students do have to click return to the main call in for order for them to go back to the main meet. Another great thing about breakout rooms as well is if you want to end the room yourself or close the rooms early, you can also do that as well. And the way in which you do that is you just click close rooms. Once you click close rooms, it will bring up something that says close all breakout rooms. Everyone will be asked to return to the main call in 30 seconds. So then you can click close all rooms and then on the student's view, 
they are shown that the breakout room is ending in whatever amount of seconds that are left. If they wanna go ahead and return to the main call, they can, or if they wanna wait until the time goes out, they can do that as well. The next feature that I'm going to show is polls. When you click polls, you can find out what others think. Um, and the way that this works is you as the teacher can put a question with different answer choices and your students can respond. So let's start a poll. So if you notice, it says ask a question, then you can um, include multiple choice answers and then name and answers will be recorded. So this is information that will be sent to you as the teacher um, to where you're able to have that documentation and see exactly what everyone put. So let's ask a fun question. So for my question, I'm going to say something very simple like french fries or salad. Now again, of course, you would most likely have some kind of question pertaining to your content, but because this is a tutorial, we're just going to say, would you like to have french fries or salad for your side dish when you are eating a meal? So then we can write french fries and we can write salad. And then if you want to add a third option, you can, and we can say none. Then you could hit save and then it saves it for later. So if you would like to do these polls while they're working and then when you guys go over the questions, you can already have it set up and ready to go. So let's go ahead and launch this and see what it looks like on the student's view. So when we click launch, it'll say that it is live and it will say who is voting what. So currently, right now, nobody has voted for anything yet, but let's kind of take a look and see what it looks, on, looks like on the student view. So on the student view, they are going to have to click the activities button as well. And then if you notice, there is a green button on there on the section where it says polls, they will go ahead and choose what they would like. So French fries or salad. So let's say that a student says salad and then they click vote, then it'll show that they have voted. On the teacher's view, it will show so far that only one student has voted and they have chosen salad. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like when all of the students have chosen an answer. From the teacher's point of view, you can notice that we have three votes for french fries and one vote for salad. So the teacher can show everyone the results to kind of get a viewpoint and allow the students to see what others chose. So here is the student view. And as we can see, the students are able to see what they happen to choose, as well as the amount of people who also chose the same thing as them or the amount of students who happen to choose something differently. So this is something that is great to use if you happen to have some questions where you have um, a, a, B, C, D, multiple choice type of question, or if you just wanna take a quick poll, it's something that the students like. Um, and I think also it's something that's beneficial for teachers as well. Lastly, if we happen to end the poll, the poll will have ended. And also on the student's view, it will show that the poll has ended as well. If you want to add more polls, all you have to do is create a poll again and do that same process again. And just make sure to click launch so that the students are able to see it on their end. The next feature that we are going to take a look at is the Q&A, which gives everyone an easy way to ask questions. So instead of you having them type in their questions, once you click this, you can allow for questions to happen. So this, if you uh, just got done explaining an assignment and you want to know if students have any questions, this is a great thing to use. So let's kind of take a look and see how it works. First off, as the teacher, you can ask a question. So maybe you want to say, does everyone understand the assignment? Then you could click post. And if you notice, it has been posted. So it has a mark as hidden. You can also mark as answered. 
you can delete the question and then also there's an option to upvote the question. So if we are taking a look at the student's view, they are able to see the question. And so then they can hit upvote, meaning that they can respond and say that they happen to understand the assignment. Maybe your students also want to ask you questions about it. So let's go ahead and see what it will look like on the student's view if they were to ask a question. Are we able to work in groups? So this is the question that the student has. If they hit enter or they can click post, it will then be um, there for the teacher to see. If we take a look at the teacher view, we are able to see that student one asked the question, are we able to work in groups? Let's say that the other students also have the same question. They could also like that question as well. And so for the teacher, they are able to see that two students have the same question. Once you as a teacher have answered it, you can mark as answered. And so on the student's view, it will show also that the question has already been answered. So again, this is a great tool to use whenever you um, have assignments and maybe you're just, you've just finished explaining the assignments um, and then kind of allowing students to ask those questions. Or maybe you just wanna do a simple Q&A to where the students can ask whatever questions they would like. Thank you guys so much for watching that tutorial. Hopefully it was something that was beneficial to you. Hopefully you learned all about the different Google Meet features. Um, I will be also having a video all about breakout rooms because I know sometimes breakout rooms work, sometimes they don't. Sometimes kids get in there and talk or they don't talk at all. Um, so in my next video, I will be providing some tips on that. So please make sure to be on the lookout for it. Uh, with that being said, um, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure to like and comment, and I will see you guys in my next video.